let's now look at importing graphics. Generally, we don't import graphics, we actually draw everything, especially on common high usage parts. You may say this mega is too hard to draw, so why don't we just import it? But you've got to remember, every electronic design program with a 3D element, you have to actually draw everything anyway, and then add a third 3D element. So it's just as complex in those programs as it is in Fritzy. We go back to the mega, you can see these pins are just single pin elements stuck together. So they're all drawn just by one little image. These are just rectangles. This you might be able to get from a part in the core bin. And same with this. This is repeated here. And you might be able to get this and this from the core bin as well. So most of it could be already drawn. Basically the better you are at drawing in Inkscape, the easier this is going to be. Let's now look at some imported images. Here we have some ECU connectors and a map sensor. And the reason I imported these was because they're very low usage. Hardly anyone will want these parts and it's more like a one-off for myself. So I imported the images to save time. This map sensor was a PNG and these three connectors were PDFs. And if you look carefully, not all PDFs are created equal. Let's zoom in. Notice the sharp lines in this one and the blurry lines in this one. This one was probably created with some sort of vector program and this is just a common JPEG conversion. Basically these were too hard to draw when they are only being used as a symbol. These are the actual connectors below. We'll now import a PDF using this one as an example. Go to Inkscape, New Document, File, Import, Come down to your PDF and open it. I usually just press OK. If the image is some sort of raster image, you'll have to trace it to a bitmap. But if it's like an SVG image, like this one is, which is a bit rare, you'll have to ungroup this right down to the base level. Here I have it ungrouped. We just arrow select, select the box. Edit, copy, file, new, edit, paste, then we'd box select, arrow key as much as we can, and delete as much bulk as possible. Then we'd have to go in and node select and fine tune each node, clicking on the node, holding down the shift key and clicking nodes one by one. And then deleting them. And you'd keep doing this until the whole drawing is clear. Now we'll go to image import. The first thing you have to do is find a suitable image. We can use this image because it's directly from above and there's not much shadowing or 3D. But if you look at this one, there's shadowing and because the photo is not from directly above, this hole and it shows the 3D section of the part. So we have to get rid of this and this first. Basically this part is not suitable unless you can edit out this and the shadow. And you usually do that in a photo editor beforehand. Let's now import an image into Inkscape. Import. I generally say OK. Here's one I already cleaned up with a photo image editor. You can see all the holes are clear. Now we have to trace it to a bitmap. You go path, trace bitmap and this dialog box will open. Here we can press update and this will be the output of this trace bitmap dialog box. First thing we notice it's not in color so we'll click, click colors. Update and now it's in colors. If you now notice the preview the writing is not as clear as the original so we'll have to play around with these options until it's just as clear. 
In this case, we'll take off the smoothing. Now it's even sharper than before. As an option, there is a live preview here. We are happy with it now, so we'll go OK. It is now on top of our original bitmap. Move it to the side, select our original one and delete it. And now we will be using this one. This particular part has three pins at the bottom, so we'll scale it to the size that make the three pins look proportional to the rest of the item. First we close this, Object, Transform, and here we can Scale, Rotate, Skew and Matrix. I mainly only use Scale and Rotate. Let's quickly scale something as a, an example. Here we can scale proportionally, change the percentage, pixels, inches, millimeters, whatever you like. Percentage will be good enough for now. Now change this to 200%. Notice the height change, scale proportionally, apply. Now we'll look at rotate. Here we've got angle, we'll change 90 degrees based on the drop down box, apply. And that pretty much covers all of transform. That pretty much covers all the input stuff. So for the rest of this video, I'll just go through other tools that I sometimes use. The first we'll look at is File and Export PNG Image. This comes in handy sometimes. Next there is Edit, and right at the bottom is Preferences. This is the, sh this is the internal workings of Inkscape that has a lot of custom settings. In, it. in View, we can turn off Page Grid and Guides. Here, we'll grab a guide. Put it in, view, turn off guide. Next, we'll come to object. Here is the group and ungroup as we covered before. And the transform is here, but there, you might also find align and distribute quite useful. This allows you to align an object with another object. In align, we select two objects. And with this relative to first selected, or last selected, or whatever you like, we can move one object towards the other using these buttons here. As an example, we will select this, duplicate, move it here, turn off treat selection as group, hold the shift key down, select the other one, we'll align it to the first selected, which was this one, Horizontal align, vertical align. Now it's on top of the other. And the last thing I sometimes use is path and the union difference intersection and cut path. There to make oddball shapes joined together or bits of sections cut out. Well that pretty much covers all the drawing sections.